So last Friday was a day. I was chilling, playing retail WoW, got my mage to level 70, and I was talking to my boy Rorier, and he was like, yo, Q, I think Steven is about to go on the Tangents of Creation stream. And I'm like, no way. I pull up to the stream, and I see an account named Steven Sharif saying, let's get in a Discord call. Dude, what? Let the fun begin. So that same Friday, the article came out that went deeper into freeholds. It actually is a really good read, so I'll link that in the description for anyone who wants to go and read it themselves. The article started out with how to get your freehold and went over everything that we already know about freeholds, but it also went slightly deeper. They spoke about baronies and what they are. It says, in the region around each node, there are parcels of land that are reserved specifically for the freehold and guild hall systems, which we call baronies. A barony is a predetermined area of land near a node or in that node's vassal structure. It can be helpful to think about these baronies as counties where many freeholds will be placed. These baronies may contain a single guild hall, which are similar to freeholds, but may only be obtained by guilds. Within each barony, several estates exist that may be bid on by individual players. After you've successfully bid on an estate, your freehold deed will be available to place within the boundary of the successful purchased estate. It then went on to talk more about the other systems that we're familiar with, who is able to have permissions to your freehold, developing your freehold, artisan buildings, business buildings, farming and livestock, and losing the freehold. You'll need to pay an upkeep fee, which is just taxes for the freehold. If you neglect to pay it, your freehold can go into foreclosure, which results in you losing the freehold. We also know that no one can steal from your freehold unless they have the permission to actually go into your freehold, or if there was a siege and your freehold gets attacked during that time period. This is gonna be real cinematic. The castle gets attacked and is on fire, and now you see a gang of players heading for your freehold ready to take everything you have. I'd imagine if you have some type of falling out with someone that is in your family or guild that they might want to steal from you because they have those permissions. At the end of the article, we got a list of all the freehold cosmetics and the category that they apply to. If you've bought some freeholds in the past, it might be good to check out what they apply to. Moving forward, when you buy a freehold, you'll be able to see the building type before making the purchase. I think this is going to help a ton of people because I know there was some confusion before because most people thought they could put any cosmetic on any building. So now there shouldn't be as much confusion surrounding the topic. Like I said in my intro, I was chilling Friday night, doing what I do best to become the king of the MMO players. And Steven just decided to pop into the tangents of creation stream and do an unofficial Q and A. Now, we didn't get a slew of information or anything like that, but the fact that this man Steven just got out of work, dropped into the stream like it was nothing, told me a few things. Number one, I lost count, but like my last three or four videos, I've been saying that this game is coming soon. I don't know how soon, but much sooner than we think. Steven feels comfortable enough to just drop into his stream randomly and chop it up with some of the creators. Do you know how insane that is? He doesn't seem like he's trying to gain anything from this either because Jamie and Annie have been doing their podcast for a long time and are known in the community, but they aren't an Asmongold, Tim the Tapman, etc. You get what I'm saying. Steven isn't doing a press run. This seems like he's doing it for the love of the game. Number two is community. I believe Steven is aware of the people like Jamie and Annie who run the Tangents of Creation podcast and he is someone who respects their work. So for him to come on and co-sign them in that way shows how he truly feels about the creators of Ashes of Creation. I'm sure he knew what that would do for them and how that would make them feel. And for any creator, that's a huge confidence booster. And it's good for them, man. Props to Steven, Maggie, and the team at Intrepid for fostering a community where stuff like this is possible. You rarely see stuff like this happen. I say this all the time. I'm just happy to be here. We're getting so much Ashes of Creation news, Steven is on a world tour press run, we're seeing nodes in two weeks, dog, it's lit. I will say though, the trajectory is about to change. The node stream is gonna be insane, right? I've been telling everyone, get in a community, 
make some friends. Let's wait for Ashes of Creation together. It's gonna change. I'm telling you, the hype is going to come back. What are your thoughts on the current state of Ashes of Creation? Please let me know in the comment section below. If you haven't created an Ashes of Creation account yet, feel free to use my link in the description if you're looking for a Discord to come kick it with. That community that I was telling you about, come chill with us, man. If you want to stay up to date with me, feel free to follow me on Twitter and Twitch where I'll be streaming Alpha 2 and the live monthly updates. All right, I'll talk to you guys soon. Take care.